Well, good afternoon. Welcome, everyone. Today, September 20th, is the 100th anniversary of the very first day of classes at the brand new Eau Claire Normal School. 100 years ago. Of course, Eau Claire Normal School later would be known as Eau Claire State Teachers College, which would later become known as Wisconsin State University Eau Claire, which would finally become, you guessed it, the University of Wisconsin Eau Claire. For today's performance, I'll ask you to try to cast your minds back over an entire century to imagine the decades of conversations with each other, so many significant national and international events. UW-Eau Claire has grown from its teacher training roots into its current identity as a comprehensive university engaged in the world. We are dedicated to diversity of ideas, of people, and of disciplines. And you know, the tone has changed considerably since those early days. A hundred years ago today, probably in this very location, they didn't have a chancellor, they had a president, and that president was Harvey Schofield, after whom this building and this auditorium were named. A self-admitted Puritan, President Schofield con conducted morning assemblies every day for years, often with an emphasis on morality. One of his favorite subjects was temperance, and it appears over and over in the rules and regulations governing student behavior, and it was at this very spot, in this very room, that he reminded the students of Eau Claire Teachers College of that important point. For example, young women with skirts considered too short were sent home to change. Male students were prohibited from playing cards or gambling. And all students were expected to keep their residence house rooms in order at all times. I have to admit, as a father of teenage boys, that I wouldn't mind seeing the last rule reinstated, at least in my house. As campus administrator, however, I shudder with the thought of having to conduct regular room inspections. And today's equivalent of playing cards is probably Pokemon Go, and I'm, I'm pretty sure even we couldn't restrict that, even if we wanted to. So we've come a long way from the days of Harvey Schofield. I don't know if Harvey would have approved of my socks, but you know I can't help but support the blue gold wear. So I don't know if I'd be sent home to get some more conservative black socks, which I do have at home, but try not to wear them as often as I once did. But things have changed a lot from those early days. Email has been replaced by morning, uh, email has replaced the morning assembly. Cell phones and text messaging have really replaced letters. And our students have increasingly taken more and more responsibility, not only for their own behavior, but for their entire educations inside and outside the classroom, which is as it should be. So let's watch and listen as these student voices spanning 100 years of our history engage with the big and small issues, sometimes light and humorous, sometimes quite serious. But collected together, these scenes offer us a brief portrait of who we've been, who we are, and who we may become then and now. A poignantly brief history of UWEC. Then and now. With historical contributions from Dr. Robert Goff and Gregory Koken. The words of Michael Perry. The poems What Do Teachers Make by Taylor Molly and I Am Diversity by Charles Benefield. Lyrics from the UWEC alma mater, excerpts from the U.S. Army Creed, and the pledge from the Coretta Scott King Young Women of Leadership High School. Portions of Jake Rassie's speech delivered at the UWEC Kent State Memorial and UWEC news releases. Current day facts and thoughts by Jack Bushnell. 
Costuming by Amanda Profazer. And writing and organization of the script by Arthur Grothy and Karen Morris. So, why, why Eau Claire? I do declare, this town needs a school, a place of learning, liberal education, agriculture, and artistic development. Members of the Eau Claire community as far back as the 1880s supported the idea of a state normal school within the city. This is the perfect spot. The Chippewa Redwoods idyllic banks and pastoral setting would be the perfect backdrop for a first building. It was, however, not until 1909 that their efforts successfully led to the state legislature identifying Eau Claire as the site of the next normal school. According to that legislation, the city, without cost to the state, shall furnish a suitable site. After reviewing several sites, Durand, no. no. <laughs> Plum City. No. no. Fall Creek. Oh, oh no. no. The city selected a location adjacent to the Third Ward, where Little Niagara Creek meets the Chippewa River, and purchased it. Cha-ching! Almost exactly 100 years later, UWEC and other community members recognized not only the business potential, but the metaphoric significance of our geographic location at the confluence of several waterways. Here, where generations, students, community members, music, art, and local agriculture flow together, is the center of rich potential, highlighted by the new Confluence Performing Arts Center, which breaks ground this fall. Cha-ching! In addition, Oakler has become the host venue for national music festivals, including Blue Ox, Country Fest, Rock Fest, and of course, the Eau Claire's Festival coordinated by Eau Claire's own Justin Vernon. <sighs> a festival made famous by Eau Claire's homegrown parrot, poet Michael Perry. <sighs> uh, it's good to see you here. Everybody's gathered around. Uh, I'm Michael Perry, and it's my honor and privilege to be the narrator of the Eau Claire's Festival. We are so grateful to have you here. Now, it's good to have music near a river. There's this idea of baptism, of absolution, no matter what you believe. And better yet, it's good to have music near a place where two rivers come together, a confluence. For what are we if not a confluence? A confluence that lives and breathes, a confluence of dream and song, a confluence of 22,000 beating hearts. And so here we are, cradled by a river in a sanctuary of sound, craving consecration, exaltation, on the bended knee seeking benediction. Amen. But hey, man, what does this all have to do with UWEC? This is supposed to be a history lesson, not a poetry reading. Right? There's a hundred years of history, and we only just gotten the doors open. Back to 1916, and how we picked our colors. September 26, 1916. With the normal school having been in session for only a few days, the morning assembly of September 26, 1916 would be significant. Groups of students presented their choice of school colors in a demonstration. Wait, there was a morning assembly every day in Eau Claire? Uh, yes, but they eventually got rid of it. It was a long, long time ago. Something like 1982. That is a long time ago. I mean, there was no texting or cell phones or Pokemon Go. And, and now back to our lesson. <clears throat> a senior named Johnson, first name uncertain. Probably because there wasn't any cell phones and caller ID. <clears throat> Johnson presented Yale Blue and Old Gold. Yay! <laughs> a group not further identified. Probably because Facebook wasn't around. <clears throat> A group, elected to decide upon the colors, considered the blue and gold to be the best, and they were subsequently chosen. In short order, they also crafted an alma mater. Oh, Claire College, dear, we're not singing, are we, guys? No, no we're not. OK, me neither. Fun fact, a spectator writer shortened the name of the football team from the blue, blue and golds to, to the, the blue golds. golds. Yes. What is a blue gold? Oh, that's easy. It's a flowing river with little yellow boats on it. Uh, what? 
No, just because there's that new Confluence project in Greenfield Streets getting a facelift doesn't mean everything is about the river. Besides, it's a mythical creature. <laughs> no, it's much more hawk-like. While the name stuck, it has taken almost our entire 100 years to figure out what a blue gold actually is. And what the mascot's name ought to be. Blue! blue. <laughs> the naming of the mascot came about only after a student petition in 2010 rejected the options developed by faculty and administrators. Boo hiss! Boo hiss! And instead forced the creation of a student-only committee to decide the issue. Hip hip, hip hip! Hooray! According to Casey Driscoll, author of the resolution to form the new Blue Gold Mascot Task Force. The students have spoken and they feel slighted. They want the obvious choice, which is the mythical bird. Blue became official in the fall of 2012. Blue then returned to the sidelines and continued to help support UWEC athletics. Little known UWEC trivia fact, Blue was there in spirit for the first homecoming game. Yay sports! <laughs> While UWEC came out on the small side of the score, which means they lost, the hastily put together festivities redeemed a success for students. Gathering on campus at 2 p.m. and cavorting in happiness. These days, Homecoming is a week-long celebration where we crown a king and queen, and each day is filled with new challenges and events. Oh, don't forget cavorting and happiness. Yes, we know, but don't take your cavorting too far because some people take their cavorting too far. <laughs> but come on. Cavorting's my favorite part. Getting us back on track. While Eau Claire Normal avo avoided any of the serious disruptions to American society during the World War I years. Spanish flu. Red Scare, Trenchfoot, etc. The war still impacted campus. Enrollment dipped 13%. The basketball squad won 0 and 9. 0 and 9? Yeah, did not win one game. Ooh. President Harvey Schofield instituted such non controversial measures like meatless Tuesdays in the cafeteria and discontinued instruction in German. That's right, even the thought of conjugating a German verb was strictly verboten. During the assembly of April 6, 1921, at the urging of faculty member George Simpson, himself a veteran of the war, a memorial was ded dedicated to the only Eau Claire Normal student who lost their life in action during the war, Lieutenant Arthur Olson. I am an American soldier. I'm a warrior and a member of a team. I serve, serve the, the people, people of the United States. States. I, will I will always place the mission first. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. I will never leave a fallen comrade. I am a guardian of freedom and the American way of life. I am an American soldier. Today we have 368 veteran students on campus. Approximately 100 are combat vets from Afghanistan and Iraq. Averaging an age from 25 to 34 years old. 89% are men and 11% are women. I am an Army civilian, a member of the Army team. I am dedicated to our Army, our soldiers, and our civilians. I will always support the mission. I am an American student. I will be on top of my game. I will stand out and not just fit in. I will be the greatest influence. I will, I will take, take responsibility, responsibility for my actions. I will lead the way. I am an Army civilian. I am an American student. But whether a veteran student, a first year student, a fifth year student, or a non traditional student, Paying for that student status has always been difficult. Now tell me about it. You know I talk to my loan officer more than I do my parents. Well, I am, but call your mom. Yeah. <laughs> Up to this point, Eau Claire State Teachers College, as it was now known, had not received any financial aid from the federal government. Now the National Youth Administration, part of the Works Progress Administration, began awarding financial aid to students as part of a comprehensive <laughs> program of assistance to young people during the Great Depression. Cha-ching! Financial aid! Financial aid! Get your financial aid here! 
Well, in fact, a job like this, being a town crier, was one of the first work-study jobs on campus. Financial aid, government pays you, save, WPA helps you get your BA. This program would actually pave the way for future federal loan and grant programs. But it's still not enough. The challenge of attaining an affordable education is still an ongoing fight. As Washington, D.C. was preparing for President Obama's final State of the Union, UW Eau Claire student body president and vice president were on Capitol Hill, highlighting the importance of college affordability, federal financial aid, and campus safety. Over the course of three days, 20 student body presidents, vice presidents, executive staff, and senators, affiliated with the UW student system representatives, held more than 25 meetings with elected officials in both the House of Representatives and the Senate, including enti Wisconsin's entire congressional delegation and the members from the House and Senate Education Committees. There is more importance now than ever before riding on a student completing their bachelor's degree. Not only is it crucial for success in the workforce, but the cost of attaining that degree is always on the rise. Tens of thousands of dollars are needed to travel from freshman move-in to the stage of commencement. And for students that can't pay that out of pocket, federal financial aid and options for how to pay off those loans are vital. UW Eau Claire's estimated 2016-2017 price for a student without financial aid was reported as $19,800 and is the lowest among all public universities in money's 50 best colleges list. Dude, this school is one cheap date. Yes, but did you know that UWEC has been named one of Money's 2016 best colleges and is one of just two UW system universities included in Money's 50 best public colleges list? So let's say UWEC is a frugal and a sound investment for your future. Whatever, man. I just don't want to be walking up and down Water Street going, hear ye, hear ye, for the next four years. The year is now 1940. And William R. Davies is introduced as the new president. OMG Davies? Yo, he has the same name as our student center. I mean, that's crazy. What are the odds? Uh, the student center is named after him. Oh. William R. Davies had an agenda to develop new teaching models and to expand the school. In his own words. From this moment on, your school is my school. Your problems are my problems. Your hopes are my hopes. Your success is mine as well. Let us build further on the foundation so ably laid by those who have pioneered so that Eau Claire State Teachers College can take its place of leadership among the teacher training colleges of the country. In the fall of 1949, Eau Claire State Teachers College reapplied for accreditation from the North Central Association of Colleges and Universities. Accreditation, please. Nuh-uh. The school's previous effort in 1946 had been unsuccessful. But in the following years, President Davies and faculty worked diligently to correct many of the problems cited in the 1946 report. When accreditors still hesitated, Dean of Instruction Leonard Haas persuaded them to grant accreditation by displaying to them blueprints for a new building, which would ease overcrowding in Old Main. Okay, this is so crazy. I mean, we have a Haas building too. I mean, it's across the AC Bridge of Doom, but I mean, we still have it. I mean, what are the odds? That's because the school named the building after him. Right. Continuing on. I have new plans to expand. OK, accreditation granted. To celebrate, the administration canceled classes for an entire hour. <laughs> classes canceled. Yay! Yay! This never happened. Let's go play cards in the dorms. We're gonna have a new building with more idyllic views of the river. It's time for cavorting. No, no cavorting. cavorting. Instead, the school enjoyed an all-school snack, courtesy of Tender Crust Baking Company and its president, <laughs> Regent William McIntyre. Yum! Thanks, William. The college's long-awaited dreams of expansion became a reality. As a building complex featuring a gymnasium, later called Zorn Arena, classrooms and offices, Later called Brewer Hall. A 400 seat little theater. They now call Kajir Theater. Uh, that's Care Theater, named after Earl S. Care, the longtime theater director. And a campus school was dedicated. Student body president Charles Jenks commented What remarkable advancements I have observed during my three years on campus. Accreditation, new buildings, 
and initiation of liberal arts degree programs. During the next few weeks, President Davies set forth an agenda aimed at recruiting and educating a more cosmopolitan student body. I am diversity. Please include me. I am present in every place you go. Depending on your lens, I am friend or foe. I'm a force to be reckoned with. Like the winds of change, I move. I'm swift. I'm present when two or more are together. If embraced, if embraced I, can I can make, make the, the good, good even better. better. I am not limited by age, gender, or race. I'm invisible at times and yet all over the place. Do not exclude me due to a lack of knowledge. Welcome me like the recruit fresh out of college. Let me take my seat at the table. Even though I may be differently able. My experience. My passion. The authentic me. My, my name, name is diversity, diversity and, and yes, I stand tall. Recognize me and keep me in the mix. Together, Together there's, there's no, no problem, problem that, that we can't can fix. fix. I'm your best hope towards true innovation. To many, I reflect hope and inspiration. Your lives will continue to change. Thus, the need for diversity and inclusion will also remain. Established in the 1940s as the Chippewa Valley, the Forum Series welcomed Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. on Thursday, March 29, 1962. King addressed the fight for equality and called upon the President of the United States to issue a second Emancipation Proclamation, an idea he first presented in 1961. King stated, The first proclamation freed us from slavery. The second could free us from segregation, which is actually nothing but slavery. King also urged those in the fight for equality to use nonviolent actions. Destructive means cannot be used to bring about constructive ends. We can hate injustice, but we must love the perpetrators of it. I am diversity. Do all that you can to truly embrace me and experience life's fullness totally. I'm the thought lurking behind the unfamiliar face. I'm the ingenuity that helps your team win the race. I'm the solution that came from the odd question that was asked. I stand out in the crowd when I, diversity, am allowed to be unmasked. I'm, I'm diversity. diversity. Embrace, Embrace me and we'll journey far. I'm, I'm diversity. diversity. Include me and we will reach the shining star. Coupled with inclusion, our lights, our lights burn, burn longer. longer. Together, Together we, are we are smarter, smarter better, better, and stronger. stronger. I am diversity. In February 2008, almost exactly 46 years after King's visit, we hosted Barack Obama, who would go on later that year to become the first African-American president of the United States. And he did so partially by energizing young people, including our students. Throughout the 1960s, the free speech movement grew on college campuses all across the United States. Generally, Wisconsin State University Eau Claire encouraged free speech and remained open to differing viewpoints. This practice, however, was challenged in 1967 when the college Republicans and the college Democrats invited the leader of the American Nazi Party, George Lincoln Rockwell, to speak on our campus. Rockwell's presentation, which was closed to the general public, received almost universal condemnation from the more than 3,500 students who attended. Political science professor Carl Anderson, who had experienced the Nazi occupation of Norway, introduced Rockwell with scathing remarks, but reminded the audience that the true test of freedom is to be willing not to silence the idea we abhor. President Leonard Haas was commended around the state after the event for not fearing the extreme political speech. Whoa. <sighs> I need a breather. I mean, this is really intense stuff, you guys. I know. Anyone who says there's nothing to do here is crazy. Did you guys know that Eau Claire was actually featured in Time Magazine this summer? Oh, yeah. You know, last spring I got to see Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, and Donald Trump in the same day in Eau Claire. What? what? Yes. You'd think I'd miss all that cavorting? <laughs> there, there it is. is. Back to the story. In response to the United States invasion of Cambodia, and the shooting of four protesting students at Kent State University two days earlier. 3,500 students gathered south of the Davies Center and heard President Haas tell his fellow students, The university cannot take an official position on a proposed student strike. But morally, 
every member of the university community can register their own personal position. Haas urged the students on campus to discuss and debate recent events, but to do so in a respectful manner. Freedom cannot exist in an atmosphere of fear or violence. The students voted for a strike and followed the encouragement of Haas and other speakers to remain peaceful. UW-Eau Claire students, alumni, faculty, and staff, and members of the Eau Claire community, thank you for joining us today to remember the events of 45 years ago. At UW-Eau Claire, our students build the foundation for a lifetime of active citizenship. Whether it's, pro whether it's protesting the unfair treatment of their peers, or standing up for their education, or traveling to Madison to speak with legislators about the issues that matter to them, Students here know how to change their world. This spirit, this willingness to calmly, firmly address a situation, not to vent anger or incite antipathy, but to improve the world that they inhabit, is a vestige of the ideas of the 3,500 students who, that stood where we're standing 45 years ago today. Peaceful protest may seem calm, but it is expansive in its subtlety and has proven its method. With this idea in mind, we dedicate this memorial and remember the words of the anthropologist, Dr. Margaret Mead. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. The story of UWEC has not been without struggles and setbacks. Amid declining enrollment, the UW system announced that tenured faculty members would be terminated and that UWEC would lose eight tenured faculty members. While the student voice was largely silent on these terminations, faculty members voiced their strong opposition. The Association of the University of Wisconsin Faculties unsuccessfully brought suit against the system. The proposed terminations and the ensuing struggles, although ultimately never implemented, left a permanent scar between faculty members and administrators. As a secondary education major, it's hard to see the benefit in teaching when it sometimes seems that teachers aren't appreciated. Both my parents teach, and they realize that sometimes it's not what you make, but the difference you make as a teacher. And I think teacher and poet Taylor Molly said it best in his poem, What Teachers Make. He says the problem with teachers is, what's a kid going to learn from someone who decided his best option in life was to become a teacher? He reminds the other dinner guests that it's true what they say about teachers. Those who can do, those who can't teach. I decided to bite my tongue instead of his and resist the urge to tell the other dinner guests that it's also true what they say about lawyers, because this is a dinner and polite conversation. I mean, you're a teacher. Be honest. What do you make? And, and I, I wish she hadn't, hadn't done, done that. that. Ask, ask me, me to be honest? honest? Because you see, I have this policy about honesty. And if you ask for it, then I have to let you have it. You want to know what I make? I make kids work harder than they ever thought they could. I can make a C-plus feel like a Congressional Medal of Honor and an A-minus feel like a slap in the face. You want to know what I make? I, I make kids wonder. I make them question. I make them criticize. I make them apologize and mean it. I make them write. I make them read, read, read. I make them spell definitely beautiful. Definitely beautiful. Definitely beautiful. Over and over and over again until they will never spell either of those words wrong ever again. I make them show all of their work in math. And hide it on their final drafts in English. I make them understand that if you've got, got this, this, then you follow, follow this. this. And if someone ever tries to judge you by what you make, then you give them this. Here, let me break it down for you so you know what I say is true. Teachers make a difference. Now what about you? UWEC currently has a faculty to student ratio of 1 to 21. 27 person average class size. 81 percent full-time faculty that hold the rank of doctor. So I guess that means that nobody should be getting sick here. That's uh, PhD, not MD, it's Doctorate of Philosophy. Right, that too. And back to the matter at hand. Although today we have a greater representation of faculty in gender, race, and religion, this was a slow process. On Friday, April 24th, 1981, Emily Hanna was inaugurated as the fourth chancellor of the University of Wisconsin-Eau Claire. At the inauguration, Hanna, the first woman to lead a UW system school, 
spoke of the university's obligation to provide tomorrow's leaders. Not because we believe that only the college educated can or should lead, but because from the advantage of advantages of education come ethical responsibilities, ethical foundations, and resources for leadership. The Women's Studies program first appeared in the 1981-82 course catalog. Classes were open for all to take. Did you know that the movement to adopt the Women's Studies programs was mostly student driven? The Women's Studies minor first appeared in the 1984-85 course catalog. And we've come a long way, baby. Student voice has always been a consistent undertone to representing the changes in the world to the UWEC campus. Tuesday's terrorist attacks in New York and Washington shocked the world and instilled fear and sadness not only in Americans, but in people worldwide. The Student Senate President called for students to come together for a candlelight vigil. And 400 students answered by joining together on that Tuesday night. Freshman Katherine Heitke spoke for all when she proclaimed, The only way we can overcome violence is to be unified. Students took another united stand in 2013 for the Dismantling Oppression March. Eau Claire! Our, our campus. campus! One, two, three, four! We won't be silenced anymore! Five, six, seven, eight! No, no need to negotiate! Hey, hey, ho, ho! Bigotry has got to go! On behalf of the Coalition of UWEC Student Body for Change, we have just completed a march in support of the movement towards dismantling oppression on campus. Thank you for being here today. Today, my fellow Blue Golds, we are here to get what is missing. What is missing is a safe campus. We ignore this and then it becomes normal. Let's push our university to teach and not push incidents under the rug. I invite all to dialogue to make this university better. We're students united. We'll, we'll never, never be defeated. defeated. Equity united. We'll, we'll never, never be defeated. defeated. So much has happened in these 100 years. Two world wars, numerous wars in Asia and the Middle East. Women's right to vote. The Great Depression. The Civil Rights Act. Protests nationwide against the war in Vietnam. Racial tensions and racially motivated violence the first African-American president of the United States. The Supreme Court's ruling that same-sex marriage is protected by the Constitution. And with all that and more as a backdrop, UW Eau Claire has been a kind of a microcosm. Reflecting on its many national and international concerns while growing from its original teacher training roots into its current identity as a liberal arts university. Dedicated to diversity of ideas, of people and of disciplines. UWEC. Then. And now. Let's welcome them out for another round of applause. What a great performance. They're gone. They Come on back out. I have That's for you bow again, by the way. All right. We're going to go off script for a minute. No, you don't get to leave again. I know you practice something else. I want you to, I know your names are in the program, but tell us your name, where you're from, and why you picked this university. Oh, you've got microphones. All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, I am Colin Pittman. I, I'm from where? Madison. And I picked this university because it best fitted the needs that I needed in a school post high school. Dana Larson, uh, Eau Claire born and raised, and Eau Claire's home. It's where family is. My name is Mitchell Krisnick. I'm from Apple Valley, Minnesota. Uh, I picked Eau Claire. It had the programs I wanted, and it was just the best financial choice for me right now. It wasn't about the cavorting. No, all right. 
<laughs> There's cavorting. <laughs> it's a part of it. I'm Tanisha Sinsala. I'm also from Eau Claire. And I chose Eau Claire because Eau Claire feels like home. My name is Lauren Brooks. I'm from New Prague, Minnesota. And I picked Eau Claire because of the opportunity and the great education. My name's Sydney Tupi. I'm also from New Prague, Minnesota. Um, I picked Eau Claire because I stepped on campus and I knew it was where I was supposed to be. Well, thanks again. Again, great job this, this afternoon. Now can I go? Thank you. Now you can go. Now you can go. <laughs> Well, I hope what you've, you've enjoyed, what you've heard and seen today, I have to, I'm not going to use my script very much. I'm, I'm reminded again through their performance and the retelling of our history of the important role that universities play in our society. Um, there should be nothing so dangerous, so difficult that it cannot be discussed on a university campus. Uh, the ideas of freedom of speech, and freedom of thought are maybe even more important today than they've ever been. Um, I think the dramatization that you've seen uh, not only reflects a little bit of our past, but also a hint at some of the other issues, large and small, uh, that our country and universities will no doubt face as we enter our second year of service. Uh, mostly, I hope you've enjoyed this great show and performance. Uh, to wrap things up, I would uh, reflect on Harvey Schofield. Uh, if he were here today, he would no doubt finish the assembly this morning or this afternoon by ordering you all off to class and uh, have a great day of learning. Um, but I'd like to thank you all for being here. Uh, now, we'd ask you to work diligently and creatively, and yes, you should go off to class. I invite you to future uh, Centennial Celebration events as we have them this year. And if you have not picked up yet the 100th anniversary book that's available in the bookstore, I would encourage you to do so, to read more about our great history, how the university has been shaped by our world, and how this university has shaped the world that, world that we live in. Have a great day. Thank you.